Hello everybody and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. I wanted to bring you an exciting tutorial from the Vectrex software on how to add a form tool to your toolpath database in Aspire and vCarve Pro. It is uh, really just as simple as creating half of the tools profile. And I have a couple of examples here. Uh, one that is pretty simple. Let's start here with a basic core box. This is a one and a half inch core box bit. And what we need to do here is we need to create, as you see here, half of the diameter. So if you have a one and a half inch core box, then we know this is three quarter of an inch radius. Now to do this one, what I did was I knew that we had an inch and a half diameter. And so I created an inch and a half circle, as you see here. And then I simply split it up into quarters. And I'll do this quickly. You want to make sure that you're in, in the middle uh, when you do this and that all of your lines are uh, at 90 degrees. But let me just give you a quick uh, overview of, of exactly how we do this. So here we have, we know that this is one and a half inches from here to here because we're utilizing a one and a half inch core box. And so now I just want this part. I want half of the tool profile. So now I'm going to bring my scissors in here and I'm going to cut all of this away. And I'm sure there are other ways to do it. You could uh, create an arc if you wanted uh, with a three quarter of an inch radius. I chose to do it as an inch and a half circle and cut it up. But more importantly, what do we do now? So I've got my half of my profile here. And so now I want to come over here to the tool database and open that baby up. And I want to create a new tool. Notice here I have the vector selected first. And then I'm going to utilize this drop down. I want to create a new form tool. And boom. It took my half, added the other half, and it knows the diameter now is an inch and a half. You're going to set your pass depth of based on the manufacturer's recommendations, the step over that you feel is appropriate, your speeds, your feeds, and your tool number. And you're going to name it one and a half inch diameter core box. And you click apply and OK. And you have now added that tool to your database. So if I come here and create a new um, project, and for illustration purposes, the size of the, the material doesn't matter. And let's just draw a box so that we can utilize our new uh, core box bit. We'll do a profile tool path. We'll cut it a half inch deep. We'll select our one and a half inch core box bit. And it puts it up here that whenever you create a new tool, it adds it to Imperial Tools. And I just bring it down here, click it and drag it and drop it into Form Tools. And here's my new Form Tool, one and a half inch diameter core box. Select OK. We're going to do it in three passes outside the vector. Don't need any tabs, leads, ramps, order, or corners. We'll leave the name profile and calculate. What this adding the form tools to your database does, it allows you to have visibility now of what that's going to look like when you machine it into your stock. So if I preview that tool path, you'll see that I now have an inch and a half core box that got cut into that piece of wood. Now you've seen, you know, if you're doing like a box or something of that nature, I'm sure folks have seen these uh, where you have kind of a raised panel like this. 
you can do that utilizing 3D machining tool paths and model this, but to me, it's a heck of a lot easier just to use a form tool, make one or two passes, and boom, you're good to go. Now that was a real simple one. The core box obviously is really simple because it's just a diameter radius. Let me show you a couple of these other examples that I have here. So uh, this, for example, is a, a barley twist uh, bit. And I needed to know what this was down here, this radius. I needed to know what this arc angle was here. And I needed to know what this dimension here was. And you can use your tools, your micrometers, your calipers, your <laughs> excuse me, your protractors, etc., to be able to get pretty close to what these angles are. And then again, once you have the vector, you come over here to your toolpath database, you select a new form tool, and boom, there you go. It puts the other half. It now knows exactly what this looks like. I already have this in my tool database, so I'm going to select cancel. But I want to show you one more time why we do this. Again, if I come up here to new, and again, the size doesn't matter for these, this particular demonstration. Let's go ahead and draw a box again. Come over here and do a profile tool path. We'll go ahead and cut all 75 inches of the stock. This time we're going to come over here and we're going to select our one and a half inch barley twist. Here's the profile here. Select OK. Outside the line. Again, no tabs or anything like this. We're just doing this for an example of the adding the tool to the database. Select Calculate. Once again, you now have visibility of what that tool is going to look like if you get rid of the waste. Look at that. Utilizing that, you now can see exactly how that's going to machine on your CNC machine. Really, really neat. And I have to tell you, if you get your dimensions pretty close to right on, what you're seeing here is exactly what it's going to look like. Really, really neat. Now, there are some if you watch my video of utilizing profile bits on the uh, lay, the indexer of my CNC machine, you know that I used what's called this uh, uh, triple classic plunge. This has one, two, three, four radii. It has these uh, flats or straight bits here, and then this uh, vertical piece here. And if you if you want to know what it's going to look like when it's drawn you can mirror that to the left and it shows you now exactly what that bit looks like in its entirety and once again I really want to stress this isn't as much as making sure that the machining is accurate as it is to make sure that you have visibility of what that tool looks like in your preview. Now, having said that, you do want to make absolute certain that your distances are accurate because the machine based when when you create this form tool, let me go ahead and delete that side. Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, let me pull that back up. Okay, so here's the half of the vector here. Now, when you come over here and you create this within your database and new form tool, this has to be right on the money. This is a three inch classic plunge. Now, I figured two ten thousandths of an inch tolerance was okay for me. So, you do want to make absolute certain that you get this right because remember, the um, edge of the tool, when you select outside the line, the edge of the tool, or in this case, one and a half inches away from the vector is where your tool is going to begin to cut. Now, if you do on the line, then the center of the tool is going to cut on the vector. So most of us do profile cuts outside the vector line. And so you want to make certain that you get your dimension accurate in its entirety 
in this case an inch and a half, so that when the machine does run the G-code, it is accurate. That's very important. Other than that, again, this is so that we can have some visibility now. If I go ahead and do a new one here, and I create another vector for you, and then we come over here and utilize that bit we just uh, I just showed you, which is that uh, triple classic plunge, that really detailed one, and click OK and calculate, preview the tool path, there you go. And that's exactly what that dude's going to look like when it machines it into the stock. So anyway, again, half the vector, tool path database, new, use your drop down form tool, it creates it for you, and then you can have some visibility when you look at your 3D previews of your tool paths. And I really think that utilizing form tools in a lot of cases is easier than doing the 3D roughing and 3D finishing tool paths, my personal opinion. Hey, thanks again for watching. Hope I've helped out here. If you got any questions at all, please don't hesitate to email me or put me a note in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Work against the grain. My name's Jeff.